Well, good day, everybody. Glad you could join me today. I just wanted to talk about lighting. Um, there's, there's all kinds of ways to light up your campsite, whether or not you're backpacking, car camping, whatever. You have to have lighting, right? Well, today it's not about battery operated lamps headlamps. It has nothing to do with that. Everything I have behind me here basically works on uh, white gas, propane, gasoline, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, there's, there's also different, um, different um, type of lighting you can have if you're uh, basically counting grams. Um, there's uh, small uh, you go uh, candle lights. You know, st we'll get into that out. But anyways, right now, basically, I just want to take a look at some of the lighting that I have, that I've been collecting. I had a lot more than this, but between, uh, basically, between 95 and 2012 I gave a lot of stuff away I gave away a lot of uh, uh, stoves you know white gas stoves single burners double burners triple burners you know and um, some real nice nice old ones I try to keep everything that I own pristine clean and in perfect work in order and uh, you know what uh, at the time I um, I had my big trailer and I was doing a lot of uh, camping in that and everything was run on propane and it seemed like once I got into propane and all the propane accessories <laughs> I, I got rid of a lot of my good old antique white gas burners lanterns all kinds of stuff but what you see behind me is basically what I have now left and um, I think I'm gonna purchase some more stoves just just to get them back but I wanted to talk about these lights now they're perfect at night you take one of them lights hang it up in a tree somewhere uh, light her up gather around the campfire ah oh, there's there's nothing better you know and back in the, uh, the early 60s early 70s whenever I'd be with my uh, parents out camping and stuff like that we had them everywhere you know everywhere they were everywhere and it really really lights up a camping area and, and the mood it sets it, it's perfect even the even to hear it I, I still hear it burning you know what I mean with that little bit of a hum and that whistle and uh, when you crank it up you can hear it. you know I, I still hear that I, I'll always remember that um, so we're gonna take a look at uh, you know what I have right now it's, it's gonna rain I, I it took me a good while to set this up and then now the clouds came over so this is gonna be a short video but let's take a look at uh, what I got and what you guys can uh, do also for uh, when you're out and about if you want to carry it these are great stuff you know good lights solid burns a long time so I'm going to take you off the tripod and we'll take a look at this. And again, thanks for dropping in. All right, let's take a look. Okay, right here, it's uh, six of my railroad lamps. They uh, run on lamp oil. Um, I worked for the railway for 
over 35 years and I started collecting um, telephones, um, lanterns and whatnot and uh, this is my collection that I have so far. The very first one I collected was this one here. Okay, this is the very first one, Canadian Pacific Railway, wooden handle. This is the very first one I got. That one here, this one here, I was told was from the uh, mid to late 1920s, this one here. Because the, uh, the lady I got it off of, she was in her uh, 50s, and this was her, she told me this was her great-grandfather's. And he, he had that as a gift when he retired. And he never did use it. He brought it home and it was in storage up until the time I bought it. The only thing that I'm a little disappointed at is inside, see this one here, you can see inside it has the burner, right? They all come with the burners. This one here is missing the wick, the burner. Uh, let me see if I can get this. There you go. See, it's missing the wick inside the pot. But what it does have is the original papers that came with that lantern. Which I thought was pretty cool. So, one of these days, I will find a wick for that one. Again, pristine condition. But for now, That was my first one. So a lot, like that would be a great little lantern to carry when you're doing a lot of backpacking. It's heavy or whatever, but it, it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's a beautiful lamp. So again, this one here was my very first one. And these here are all Canadian Pacific Railway, except for one, and that's this one here. This one here is the Canadian National Railway. Okay, this one here, what I was told, was from 1933 to about 1935. Canadian National. And if you look on this one, it's just a wire bale. It doesn't have the wood. All the ones that I have from Canadian Pacific have the wood handle. This is the only one I have from CN Rail. And it's got the full bale. I'm going to just put this one over here. But these are all my Canadian Pacific ones. Now, uh, this one here. This one here, Adelaide. This one here is also from the 20s. Beautiful lantern. When you light this up with the nice glow, and the way the globe is, the orange globe, uh, it's perfect. I love this one. And look at the type of handle that's on there. Different style of wood. 
compared to now. Well, when I say now, this is the uh, 1940s. And here's another one. And this one here is also from the 20s. And this is going from information that I can find online and talking to the people I purchased all these from and got their stories on it. So, if you guys want to do your bushcraft, your camping, or anything like that, you could pick up these lamps off of eBay. It, uh, if you get a good one, you could probably pick up a real nice one for about the uh, 100, 150 to 170 Canadian dollars, right? But they're going to be well used. But they're going to be in good shape with a little TLC and you got a nice lantern, right? Some of these lanterns I paid almost 300 for Canadian dollars again. And uh, there's this one here, my very first one. I got that for uh, 225 and this is what started me on getting the rest. But if you want to get some beautiful lighting and you don't mind carrying something like this on your backpack, you know, with your handle, tie it to your backpack, or just hand bomb it in. That's a beautiful, beautiful lantern. Car camping. That's a beautiful lantern. Okay, I'm gonna put this over here also. Alright, so that's that's something you can look at. Look at this beautiful one right here. Now that one there with the red globe. This one here is from I believe between 35 and 40. Very nice lamps. So now we'll take a look at a couple of different styles. I'll, I'll just reset you up. Okay, now these ones here are my Coleman style lanterns. Now, I had a couple of more, but I sold them. I should have never did that, but I sold them. They were a little bit older than this one here. They're probably early, ah, yeah, I'd say probably 52, 53. But this is what I have right now. And uh, this one here is what started it for me this one here uh, that's my dad's and uh, this is the one that we used to carry around all the time he had a few of them and then he also had the ones with the uh, dual burners but this is the one I remember back in the mid 60s early 70s uh, this one here is uh, my dad bought that in 1959 that's this one here. This one here is also 1959. And, oh, there's, there's heft to it. It's heavy. It's a Coleman. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But that's also 1959. Again, we need to hang that up in a tree, or he'd put it inside our tent, or our camper, or whatever we had at the time. We'd use that for heat, get the dampness out of the air. That way when we all went to bed at night, you could feel the heat, and it wasn't damp, and we had uh, lights 
it, it was perfect. Now, yes, they're heavy, but if you're car camping, you know, you're not going to backpack that in, but if you're car camping, beautiful lighting. Now this one, is the only one that I have that runs on pure gasoline. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but this one here comes from Hong Kong and it says on it, okay, the British Empire of Hong Kong runs on gasoline. I looked all over for a date, stamp, and I could not find one. Just could not find one. Maybe if I take it apart, I might find one, but I'm not going to bother. This one here is my first one that I bought when I was uh, on my own camping and stuff like this and this one here is a uh, 1983 that's the one I purchased right there 1983 it it too has a little bit of heft to it but when you hang that up in a tree that that's a beautiful lamp very nice lamp to have again white gas Uh, this one here I just picked up okay again white gas this one here is a 2001 this one here it's stamped on the bottom 2001 again Coleman very nice lantern. If you want to haul that around, like I said, very nice. Maybe I'll have a video and uh, we'll go through the process, filling them up and igniting them. This one here has no globe. This one had a beautiful, beautiful round globe. A little bit bigger than this one. It, it was, it was, it was beautiful nice cut round globe but it was cracked in three spots and it had a chunk taken out at the top and it was just i safety reasons i had to i had to get rid of it i just couldn't i just couldn't keep it um i think i took some pictures a while back but then again that's that's well before i had cell phones so that that would have been with my uh my uh, film cameras but anyways that's a beautiful light right there that's the only one that I have that actually runs and it says gasoline all the rest white gas the ones over there like I said my railway ones okay oil lamp oil this <laughs> that's another thing I want to say these are small little pots Okay, I'm going to take one out. I'll open the CN one, because that's the one I use. I keep all my CP ones, and my CN one is the only one I have, but that's the one that I, I use. So I'll, I'll just take that one out. Now, in them railway ones, okay, that's the pots with the wick. All right. Never close your wick more than that. Once your wick is down to here, just put your hand over the glass and blow it out. Never bring it all the way down to, to extinguish it. But this full of lamp oil and that light will simmer on medium with a nice, nice glow on it, nice light, 15 hours. Steady on 15 hours. 
in that little pot. Well, you don't leave your light on for 15 hours. So if you've got yourself a nice little bottle and you fill it up with lamp oil, and let's say you can get two fills out of that, that's 30 hours of light. Well, that's going to last you a week, no problem, because you're only going to put it on at night, maybe an hour, two hours, maybe three hours tops, right? So as long as you can fill this up twice, you got well over a week of light. And very easy, it just has a spring. Just lift it up. Got a little slot in there. That's for your flame adjuster. So when you put your pot in, there's your pot. Just line it up. There. It's in. Glass globe. And then because of where the hinge is, I tilt it forward when I close the hinge, just so it catches under there. There. Now that it's under there, okay, I can let it go and then close her off and then hinge her up. There you go. Nice little lantern. If I'm doing a lot of uh, car camping and whatnot, as they say, you know I don't own a car, own a truck. <laughs> Uh, but I'll pack them. Them are the ones I'll bring with me. And this is the one that I started with when I was just a young lad with my uh, mom and dad. And this one's 1959. So I'm going to set up. We'll take a look at a couple of uh, other alternatives for lighting. Be right back. All right. So I showed you some lights right from uh, 1920 upwards. Then I showed you some white gas uh, lanterns uh, basically from 59 all the way up to 2001 but also I got into I got into propane lanterns so I got a couple of propane lanterns this was my very first one again single mantle it, uh, it has a nice stand you can run it with these uh, little propane bottles which is great. I love this thing. Put it on a put it on a table or hang it in a tree. Yeah, so anyways, I got right into the propane ones. I really, really enjoyed it. This is my first one. And I bought this one in uh, 1993. This is what started the propane off for me. This one right here. No plastic, all metal for the stand but that's not what I'm talking about but where it screws in the bottle all metal single ma mantle okay all my other ones are all single mantle and same with this one here it's it's light now one of these bottles of propane oh god I forget how many hours and hours of, of lighting you'll have but <laughs> you'll have quite a bit Quite a few hours, that's for sure. Very easy to ignite. This is a great uh, alternate instead of carrying the other ones with the gas. This here is also bottle and all. Oh yeah. Believe it or not, <laughs> this one here, empty. This is empty. Well, let's just say I could carry an extra bottle of propane with this and it'd probably be pretty close to the same weight as that one over there. But this was the first one I bought in 93. Then later on that, uh, that uh, fall when I was hunting, I happened to notice they had another one, also propane. Okay, but this one here had the uh, plastic case on it but this one had the dual mantles okay two mantles well I just had to have it you know twice the light burn twice the fuel <laughs> but no I wanted that for the camp because man that really lights up an area again 
runs on the little bottles and also it has the same type of stand as this one here so there's the there's the other stand for this one here I just didn't go and get another bottle but you can hang that in a tree you can carry a bottle like this but if you're car camping and uh, you got a 20 pound bottle of propane that runs everything else, your trailer or your other stoves or whatnot, or you want to use a 20 pound bottle of propane, then what you can do is get yourself something like this. Here, let me back up the camera a bit. Okay, you can get something like this. This is a straight. Uh, it's called the Christmas tree. That's the part that you uh, screw on to your uh, propane. And this here sits on the bottle. That screws onto the propane. The first one, you can utilize this one here to go into, let's say, uh, your gas heater. Let's say you got a, a propane heater. Okay, so you can wire that, plumb that in. Then right here there's another one or you could plumb that right into your uh, propane uh, stove your three burner stove and then on the top basically is where you put your light so this one here is very easy to put on There you go. There's your light. All right. I have I have three of these. I have two straights and one that's uh, I'll show later that's curved. So you can hang it in a tree, or you can put it on this stand and hook it up to your propane. I'll just step out of frame for a bit and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Just to show you what I mean. I'll just turn the camera around. Okay, so there's my uh, my lantern. I screwed it on there, and it's on the uh, bottle of propane. Okay, so when you screw it into the valve, once you screw it into the valve, right here, you just drop this down, and it, it holds on the tank. It won't wobble all over the place. Then again, you can hook this up to your heater, hook this up to your stove, and then at the top, at the top, you got your uh, your lamp. Perfect thing to get. It weighs nothing. It packs small, and you know what? I like them. But what I do is. Whenever uh, I'm entertaining in the yard, uh, I got the fire pit going. Well, before I had my, uh, before I set up all my lantern or my lights here on my deck, I didn't have my deck at the time. So what I did is I had two setups like this, one on each side of my backyard. Okay, I had the double mantle. And then I had my single mantle. And this is my other one. And as you can see, it's the same thing. But rather than being straight, it has a curve in it. And I, I, keep, it, I keep a little box on here, just like that, for uh, when I store it. Just keep it clean, keep the dirt from it. All right? And then my other one, I believe it's in my travel trailer. But that's another way of uh, lighting up your campsite. Perfect way. Car camping, right? But if you want to, you can always carry that in if you like. Nothing wrong with that uh, lamp. But now, bushcraft.
you know, a lot of people are getting into the bushcraft uh, phenomenon, right? And they got to be bushcrafty. Well, these railroad lamps, you're going to enjoy that. It's going to look cool. They're they're uh, they're they're built they're built tough. They're built strong, and 15 hours on one uh, fill is a long, long time. But I'm going to leave this hooked up. I'll leave that there for now, and I'll show you my last two types of lights that I have. All right. Then you have these. In the bushcraft uh, world, phenomenal. A lot of people are gravitating to this. As you can see, it's a very nice lamp. Now, they still make them today. Um, this one here is your beacon. Okay. Now, This one was my grandfather's. Then it was handed down to my dad and my mom. And then it was handed down to me. This is old, very old. I tried to find the exact year that this here was made by researching the stamp Okay, I tried to look all over it, and I couldn't really see a true stamp for the date. But what I did find out was this here was between 1930 and 1942, is what I can find out. Now, to hang it up, you got a nice beautiful bale right there. Now that is a very, very nice lantern. Very light, extremely light, okay? You can adjust the height of your wick using this knob right here, and you fuel it up here. Okay, very nice. You lift the, you, you lift the glass right here, okay? Now, the glass itself is locked in. So to use this, you've got to grab this and you've got to pull up the sleeve here. Okay, when you pull up the sleeve, see, it's like spring activated, see? Okay, and then you can blow it out. Again, never lower your wick to extinguish your flame. All right? And, and, don't grab this or you're going to burn your hands like crazy. But if you've got a pair of gloves, put your hands here, grab this with a pair of gloves or a stick, put a stick and hold it here. Okay, this is spring activated. Blow it out. Also, if you want to light it, here, let me go from this side. If this is up like this, you can easily lift up your bowl. Okay. To light your wick but this here is a very nice lamp now do you want to take something from the 30s out camping with you yeah nothing wrong with that it, it, it works great but if you want to spend only $15 and get one at your local hardware store same idea made in 2022 that way, if something happens to it, you drop it or you break it or, or whatever happens, or if you forget it in the woods, well, you know, it's not a great loss, right? So this one here, I keep that as a keepsake, and it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of history. Now, the one beside it is a different story. That is small. This one here is a beacon. This one here is Deutz. This one is from the early 20s. Very early 20s. 
is what I was told. This one here was also used on the railways. Very small. Works exactly the same way as this one. Okay, spring activated. Okay, to lift the ball. Nice round bale. You can hang that up real nice. Now this is very, very small. Very small. And very old. This one here is a Deutsch Comet. Now the information through the glass and everything I found, again, was the 20s. So, there are some choices. You have this style here. You got the propane. You got the old Coleman's. Or you have the railway lights. And you can set it up on a propane bottle like this. But you know something? Them lights right there, they're heavy. But there's also other type of lighting you can have.